Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss further into the applied project calculus and baseball and look at question three, part B. In my earlier videos, I went over questions one, two, and three, as well as question three, part A. And so make sure to watch those to get a better understanding of this project. I'm not going to recap too much on it. Basically, uh, in question one, we looked at yeah, the collision of baseball and bat and how much force that the batter puts on that ball there with the bat how much force it takes to uh, hit it uh, hit the ball and then part B looked at I mean uh, I mean question two looked at uh, the amount of work that a pitcher does it takes to throw a fastball of 90 miles an hour and then uh, basically question three part A looked at an outfielder Fielding a ball or basically collecting the ball and, and that is let's say 280 feet away from a home plate and throwing it directly to the catcher which in this, with an initial velocity of 100 feet per second. And what we looked at was how long it took for the ball to reach the home plate and the answer was here and you could see my earlier video to see that answer because we're going to use this answer in part B as well. So the time was 3.285 seconds. And that is again a pitcher, I mean, a, an outfielder collecting the ball, and he's 280 feet away from the home plate and throws it directly to the catcher with an initial velocity of 100 feet per second. And uh, yeah, again, ignore any vertical motion of the ball. That's just an assumption we use. So now, part B is, is this is the one we're going to go over, and it looks at. Uh, basically, the, let's just go over it. This states, the manager of the team wonders whether the ball will reach home plate sooner if it is relayed by an infielder as opposed to throwing it directly to the catcher. So the shortstop, and I'll go over those that position soon, the shortstop can, can position himself directly between the, the outfielder and home plate, catch the ball uh, thrown by the outfielder, turn and throw the ball to the catcher with initial velocity of 100 feet per second. Basically, in this case, if we're relaying it, uh, relaying the ball, assuming this only works if the shortstop can throw faster than the outfielder. So if we have a shortstop that can throw faster, we want to look at if it's a faster time um, than throwing it directly. So the manager clocks the relay time of the shortstop, so the shortstop will catch it, turn and throw at half a second. So, and then now we're asked how far from home plate should the shortstop position himself to minimize the total time for the ball to reach the plate. And the question states, should the manager encourage a direct throw or a relayed throw? And then the uh, last part of it, it says, what if the shortstop can throw at 115 feet per second or about 78 miles an hour. And uh, initial one's 105 feet per second or about 72 miles an hour. And then uh, part C we'll look at later. Yeah, and in the next video I'll go over part C. So basically, uh, let's look at the outfielder. So the outfielders are basically these three in the, in the outfield, the left field, center field, right field. These are the outfielders. And then the infielders are these ones inside these four, and the shortstop is between third and second base. Second base usually stands there, and then first base is there. First base, second base, shortstop's in between. Third base, there's the pitcher, there's the catcher, and then I'll just write these arrow like this. These are infielders. These. So the four people there are infielders. So let's go over part B again. So the shortstop can position himself directly between the outfielder and the home plate. So let's just assume uh, this is the ball. This is the outfielder that collects the ball, uh, and then basically this shortstop moves over to here. So he's directly in between the catcher and the outfielder here, and then basically this outfielder. I'll just I'll just draw it actually a bit further away. Actually, I'll just keep it there. So there's the outfielder, there is the, uh, then this outfielder is the shortstop goes here, and then this person throws the ball to here, there is a, uh, a relay time of 0.5 seconds, and then so we'll say 0.5 seconds relay, and then throws this all the way to the catcher, like that. And the catcher is at the home plate, and we want to see the total time.
So that's just the overview of it. Now let's look at it in more detail. So part B, so we have the outfielder right here. And he has the ball like that. So he throws it, if you were to relay it to the shortstop, at 100 feet per second. I'll write this as V. Um, yeah, this velocity equals 100 feet per second, FPS, just for short. Throws it to this person right here. Then there is a delay. And then throws this all the way to the back catcher at a home plate over here. So this is the home plate. Here is the second. Here is the um, first base. Uh, third base and throws it here and the catcher is around here so the catcher will catch it uh, somewhere around there uh, and then this is his glove etc anyway so that's his glove catches the ball and see how long it takes let's try this further like that and now this velocity here I'm gonna write this as W for the just difference from the initial velocity V uh, this is 105 feet per second so this one is, I'm just going to let W, or I'll write that in, uh, over here. So let W equals velocity of the throw by shortstop, of the shortstop's throw. Oops. Yeah, whoops, just said a uh, minute mistake. So anyway, so W let that equal the velocity of the shortstop's throw, in our case 100 feet per second. And now we know that the total distance from home plate to here, or what we'll do first is, and then I'll, what I'll do actually first is let this uh, value from here to here, because we want to find out, so the shortstop can, can position himself between the direct fielder and that, but we want to know how far from home plate to the shortstop position himself to minimize the total time. So this is the first thing we want to solve. So we want to find out this x. So what I'm going to do is how far from home plate, and I'll let that equal to uh, x. So the uh, so the shortstop positioning himself between home plate and the outfielder, and then this distance right here. Well, we know that the total distance that the outfielder is is 280 feet, and this is from part A. So part A outfielder fields a baseball and he's 200 feet away. So then the distance from the, uh, the outfielder to the shortstop is 280 uh, feet minus x. So just sub subtract this total, uh, subtract x from the total, you get that, 280 minus x. Now in terms of time, what we'll have is, well, this uh, outfielder throws the ball here, this person catches it, and then what we have is we'll call this T1. So that is time 1, the time it takes from outfielder to the uh, shortstop, and then there's a delay right here of 0.5 seconds. So that 0.5 seconds is, is the relay time where he catches, turns, and then throws. And then there is a time here. We'll call this T2, where the uh, where the shortstop throws it to the catcher. Yeah, and here I'll also write let x equals two, uh, like I already stated, uh, distance from the shortstop or distance of the shortstop from the home plate. Okay, so that's what we're going to let it equal to. So now what we have is total time it takes, total time uh, from, from the ball to reach from the outfielder to the catcher is equal to T, we'll let it, let it equal to T, and equals to T1, time from the outfielder to the shortstop, plus the relay time of half a second, so one half second, and then plus um, the time it takes for uh, the uh, shortstop to throw to the out uh, to the catcher T2. So that is what uh, we need to find. Or better better yet, what we want what we need to find is the first part is how far from home plate should the shortstop position himself to minimize total time. So what we want is find x to minimize minimize this T like that. So to do this, so what we need to do is find, well, uh, first find T of X as a T as a function of X and then what we have to do is is uh, uh, apply the first derivative test to find the uh, minimum of it. Apply 
first derivative test and again I'll, I'll go over that I'll re recap that again in a bit but make sure to watch my earlier video I'll put the link below to um, yeah to this first derivative test video that I went over earlier so check that in the description below if you haven't already so we're gonna find t of x and apply first derivative test to find a minimum so that's what our steps are so now what next thing to do is well recall from my earlier videos so recall from Q3A. Yeah, so from that uh, 3A, what we what we had was the formula for the velocity of the ball as the person or as the outfielder or a shortstop or anyone throws it was equal to V of T equals to V0 or the initial velocity times it by e to the power of negative t over 10. And then from this, the distance that the ball travels was equal to uh, s of t, and this equal to, um, yeah, for our specific case from question uh, 3a was 1,000, and then uh, 1 minus e to the negative t 10. And this is the distance the ball travels. And this was with a velocity of 100 uh, feet per second. But if we we could just uh, make this more general, so t 10 times v o, that's what it actually is uh, for general. Yeah, but in question yeah, three a was uh, velocity was 100 feet per second by the outfielder. So that was uh, this was 10 times 100, just a thousand. So I'll just put this in general because we'll have a different velocity for the shortstop throwing it. And uh, on similar, again, to question 3, part A, we looked at the time it took, uh, well, for a direct throw was the time that it took uh, to, uh, to throw 280 feet, or from the outfielder all the way to the catcher, but now we'll just look at a general uh, time, I mean, a, a general, um, yeah, a general distance, because we're going to have a distance of x, or, or uh, as opposed to a di distance of 280 feet from last video. Uh, so basically what we're going to look at is instead of uh, f plugging this for 280 and finding the time, we're going to solve for the time it takes for the pitch, you know, for the uh, outfielder or shortstop to throw at any velocity. So solve for t um, instead of uh, the distance. Yeah, let's say solve for t to throw a distance s. And which is a function of t. So we'll just uh, solve for, uh, so rearrange to solve for uh, t instead. So to do that, what we're going to do is divide this out on this side. So what we get is s over 10 times v0 equals to 1 minus e negative uh, t divided by 10. And uh, now what we'll do is move this on this side and then move this on the other side we get e negative t over 10 equals to 1 minus s over, this is 10 v o. And then now what we have is we get ln both sides to get, bring this down, ln, and now what we end up getting is a, uh, this goes down, so negative t over 10 equals to ln. Yeah, we have ln, and now what I'm going to do is uh, simplify this just a bit further by, uh, well, that's what my calculus book does. Multiply this one by uh, 10 VO over, over VO, so what we end up getting is instead this uh, 10 VO over 10 VO minus S over 10 VO. So that this is still one, just so we could have a common denominator and add those up. What we'll have, let's put this in, in a circle. And then I'm going to throw this down here, so we get a 10 v o minus s over, and now we have this 10 v o. This will, uh, yeah, this is just the way Calculus book writes it, and it is a bit neater once we get further down the road of this video. So now rearrange again, move this negative uh, divide one over 10 on this side, or multiply by 10 both sides bring it here, what we finally get is t is equal to negative 10 ln 10 v o minus s over 10 v o. This is just a general one and in my question 3 I already solved this but for uh, the velocity of uh, v o is equal to uh, 100 feet per second. 
well, this is just a general one so now we have that so that's that and now for t1 so let's write find t1 and then the t1 is uh, basically the, the time it takes for the uh, outfielder to throw to the shortstop so t equals to t1 at and uh, now I'll write this actually as a function of t so s of t at s of t1 is equal to another total distance that the, the person throws the outfielder is well from here to the shortstop so that's just 280 minus the x so that's 280 minus x and also the initial velocity that the outfielder throws it at is well uh, is vo is equal to 100 feet per second that's what we were given from q uh, three part eight. Yeah, so that's what it is. I'll just scroll again to show you and That is right here. So that person throws at a hundred feet per second and that is uh, I'll just write this V uh, 1 equals to 100 FPS actually it's written down here. I'll write this as V1 and the other one as W and VO equals to this V1 as well So yeah, so if we plug this inside what we get is t is equal to or t1 is equal to negative 10 ln and now we have 10 vo which is 100 so we have 10 times 100 uh, and then and then minus s of t uh, t1 which is 280 minus x so this is 280 uh, minus x like that all divided by 10 times the velocity, 100. Yeah, so now we just uh, basically rearrange these, uh, or, or just uh, simplify this. This is going to be 1,000, and then this is 1,000 minus 280. That's a 720. So negative 10 ln, I'll just write this as 1,000 minus that, or else I'll write that down afterwards. Yeah, I'll just write that down here to be less confusing. So 1000 minus 280, and then this becomes positive x plus x, and then we have this divided by 1000. This equals to negative 10 ln, and then what we have here is 1000 1, minus 280, that's just, well, 720. 1000 minus 300 is 700, plus an extra 20, 720. So we have 720 plus x over 1,000, like that. So now we just need to find, uh, yeah, again, so this is a function of x, and that's the whole idea of this part here. So we find x to minimize t, so we find t as a function of x. So t1 is a function of x, now we need to find t2. I'll write that down, find t2. So for t2 is, well, t, uh, where t is equal to t2 at t of, I mean, uh, no, not that, as a distance the ball travels, t of uh, t2 is equal to, well, that's just x, that's just the, the total, so this is the formula for time it takes uh, for the ball to travel an s amount of distance. So that is just right here where the shortstop throws it to here, so the total distance is again x. Let's just uh, go back to here. So this uh, S of T2 is equal to X. And our uh, initial velocity now of the shortstop, VO is equal to, well, just a throw of the of the shortstop. We'll just write that as W. And in our case, it's equal to, well, 105 feet per second. I'll just put this in bracket because we will do this one afterwards. But first, let's just do a generic or a general uh, variable W and then solve for uh, minimize x and then plug this in because we're going to plug it in again for a different value later on in this video. So what we get is well t2 is equal to negative uh, let's just go back to this formula negative 10 ln vo uh, which is w and then minus s of t which is x so what we have is negative 10 ln now 10 times vo is w minus s of t is x and then divided by 10 W. So that is our formula for the time T2. 
Yeah, so now that we have T2 as a function of x and T1, we also have the relay time of half a second. Now the total time is just this, T1 plus half a second plus T2. So what we end up getting is, yeah, so right, right here, thus, the time it takes for the ball to travel from the outfielder to the shortstop to the catcher is equal to T1. I'll put the 0.5, and actually put that right here. So T1 plus 0.5 plus T2, which equals 2, well, T1, I'll put this in here, so 0.5 is just 1 half, and then we have right here, um, T1 is equal to negative 10 ln 720 plus X, so negative 10 ln, and actually to make it uh, simplified uh, further, notice the negative 10 and negative 10 are both the same uh, factors, so we'll just factor that out. So lawn, now we have 720 plus x over 1000, and now we have a plus, because we took out the negative 10 out. Now we have this 10w uh, lawn of 10w minus x over 10w, which is the speed of the shortstop's throw. And that is our time, and this is a time of x. Function notice only variable is x. Uh, w as well, so but we will let's uh, deal with that, and that's just more of a placeholder as well so, uh, for our uh, for our two uh, two different velocities we want to check 105 and 115 as explained above. So now that we have t of x, the next step is to apply first derivative test to minimize this t because we want to find x to minimize it. So what we'll do is, is uh, well, I'll write that down, recall first derivative test. So the first derivative test we need to do first is, uh, basically we need to find out the derivative of it and when it changes from, uh, no, find a derivative and find its zero uh, point. So first thing we need to do is find uh, dt over dx and then set it equal to zero, set it uh, to zero, or better than that, uh, better uh, written than that. So find d, d, dt over dx equals to zero, and uh, find x. So that's the first thing we need to do, and then see if it changes from negative to positive, in which case it will be a, uh, a local, uh, local minimum if it's negative to positive. So, and I'll get to that in a bit. So basically what we'll do is find dt over d dx first equals two. Yeah, so dt over dx, we'll just take the derivative of this whole thing. So what we get is a, well, the derivative of one half is a zero. Derivative now is we have a negative 10. And now the derivative of ln of this is just, well, you flip it above. This just equals to 1000 over 720 uh, plus x, and then we need to use apply the chain rule. Again, I'll just write this here. Uh, note d ln x over dx is just equal to well, 1 over x. But in this case, we have a different variable like that. So just note that. And also now we need to apply the chain rule. So d over dx of the inside function 720 plus x over 1000. So the derivative of it, and again I'll write this here, chain rule. So again, make sure to watch my earlier videos, put the link below on derivative of ln x, and also chain rule to see why you always have to take the chain rule of the inside function, because this is basically a function of a function. So now what we have is that, plus the second part now, plus um, the derivative of ln, this one, just flip that above as well, because it's 1 over x, 10w over 10w minus x, and then again apply the chain rule d over dx of 10w minus x over 10w, like that. And now we'll just put a close bracket, and let's just simplify this further. Note, and I'll just write note, or I'll just erase that. I'll just write the derivative now of this separately, d over dx of this. 720 plus x over 1000, 
Uh, this is the same thing as writing. Do you just divide it so it's just make it simpler? 720 over a thousand plus x over a thousand. And now the derivative of this is part zero. This one we have x over a thousand. The x just goes to one. We just are left with one over a thousand. So that's that derivative. And now the second one, d over uh, dx. And then I'm just going to yeah, simplify this further as well. This is the same thing as writing uh, 10. Oh, sorry, I'll also do that after. So 10w over 10. 10w minus x divided by 10w. The derivative of this is equal to d over uh, d over dx of now. Let's divide this out. 10w over 10w, which is just 1 x over 10 w and this is just a constant those cancel goes to zero derivative of a constant is zero derivative of this now same thing x goes to um, one now we have a negative 10 w so that what's this is by the chain rule and now we plug those in what we get is d over dt over dx is equal I mean dt over dx is equal to negative 10 and then put a bracket and now we have this 1000 over this was 720 plus x and then times it by uh, the chain rule here there that's just 1 over 1000 so this is 1 over 1000 and then on the other side we have this plus 10w over 10w minus this x and then times it by, well, negative 1 over 10w. Like that. And now this just cancels out. What we're left with is equals to negative 10. Yeah, negative 10, and then put a bracket like that. And then this, this thousandths cancel. We're left with 1 over 720 plus x. And now the, with this uh, 10w is canceled, but there's a negative. So negative. Uh, 1 over 10w minus x, like that. So this is what our derivative of uh, the time it takes for the ball to throw an x distance is. So now the next step of the first derivative test is basically set it equal to 0. So we need to find this and, uh, and then find x when we set it to 0. Basically what we're trying to do is find the zeros. So when we do that uh, we'll just write this set uh, dt over dx to 0. So what we get now is 0 is equal to negative 10 and now we have the 720 plus x. Let's write this a bit neater. 720 plus x minus 1 over 10w minus x. The negative 10 cancels and then what we can do is move this on the other side. What we get is this 1 over 10w minus x equals to 1 over 720 plus x. Like that, I'm going to move this on this side, move this on this side, and what we end up getting is, they say 720 plus x is equal to 10w minus x. Now solve for x. What I'm going to do is we'll move this x on this side, 10w on that side. So what we get is a 2x, and then this combines negative, uh, Actually, no, that's the opposite. I'm going to move uh, this one on this side. So when so we're going to add x on both sides, so we get 2x. And I'm going to move this on the other side, yeah, just to uh, make it less confusing. So now we have 2x is equal to 10w minus 720. And then divide both by 2 on everything. This just becomes x. 720 divided by 2 is just, well, 360. And now we have this, uh, this is 5w minus 360. So that is our zero. So this is our only zero. Our only uh, zero is our only critical point. So this just means for the, from the first derivative test, we need to find uh, the derivative less than x and greater than x. So what we'll do is write when we have uh, x is less than 5w minus 360. So when this is less than this, uh, for example, i.e. x is equal to, just pick any number, uh, let's just put less than this, 5w 
uh, is minus, let's go 400. Just so that this is, we're subtracting more from it so that's less than this value. So when we have it less, we have d t over dx is going to be equal to the derivative. Now when we have negative 10, plug that inside, so we have negative 10. And again, recall this is 720 plus x, which is going to be 5w minus 400, that's our x. And then we have this plus, I believe it's a no, so it's a minus, minus, and now we have a uh, 10w minus x, which is, well, minus x, which is just 5w plus 400, because we are minusing. I'll just put that minus like that, just more complete. And that's uh, this part right here, 10w minus x. So if we pick any number, that's our only zero, so we just pick any number less than x. That's our only critical value. Again, make sure to watch my earlier video on first derivative test to get a better idea. So now that we have this, because so, uh, we want to find if it's uh, increasing or decreasing, or oh, I mean if it's negative or positive, uh, the, uh, the, rate, you know, the rate of change of the time. So uh, what we have now is negative 10. What we, now this is 720 minus 400 is just 320. So we have 1 over, uh, let's put the 5w in front. So we have 5w minus, I'm going to plus 320. And then on this other side, we have this 1 over 10w minus 5w is just 5w plus 400. So what we end up having here is this is 1 over, this is 5 plus 320. This number is less than 5w plus 400, but we're dividing by a smaller number. Whenever you divide by a small number, you get a larger number. And this, so then what this means is uh, this number right here is greater than this number right here, this uh, 1 over 5 plus 400. So this whole thing above is less than this. Because this there's a 320, only difference is 320 and 400. This means that this overall number, you're dividing by a large number, which makes it a smaller number. So then this side is greater than this side. So what we end up having is a uh, negative 10 times it by a positive number, which is the same as writing positive and negative. Now we have negative 10 times positive number. We have a negative number. In other words, what we have is dt over dx, we're gonna do, because we don't need to solve it or whatnot. This is less than zero, because it's negative, 4x is less than 5w minus 360, which is our critical point. So uh, this is less than it at that point. We have circle that. And now we'll look at the other part. Yeah, so now the next one to look at is what happens when a uh, number is greater than it. So when x is greater than uh, 5w minus 360, for example, i.e., if you just uh, add 360 to it, we have x is, um, let's say it's equal to 5w. So when we have this, now our derivative dt over dx is equal to, and let's scroll up here. Again, uh, it's the, so 720 plus x, and this is 10w minus x. So we have a negative 10, and now we have 720 plus x, which is 5w, and like that. And then we have a minus 1 over 10w minus 5w, which is just the same as, well, 5w. So as you can see, this number, 720 plus 5w is larger than 5w, uh, so that means that you're dividing this one by a larger number than this. Whenever you divide by a larger number, you get a smaller number, so this is less than this side. So because it's less than this and we're subtracting, so basically what we're doing is subtracting this by a bigger number, so we're gonna get a negative value. So what we'll get is a negative 10 times by a negative number. Now negative number times a negative number, that's just a positive number. So that's what we get. So what that means is dt over dx is, inc well, is increasing. I mean, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's greater than zero uh, when or for, what was that? Yeah, for 
let's make consistent 4x is greater than the 0, 5w minus 3, 60. So this means that, yeah, so this means that, uh, so thus, by the first derivative test, by the first derivative test, Yeah, so by the first order of the test, since what we have is, uh, since dt over dx goes from, goes from negative, because it's less than, uh, it when, when x is less than 5w minus 3x is negative, and then it goes to positive, so positive to, negative to positive at, yeah, at uh, x is equal to 5w minus 360. So what this means is, well, let's write a better at symbol. Let's write at instead. So at this, then, then basically x equals to 5w minus 360 is a minimum. It's a local minimum, but since our case it's an absolute because uh, it's the only critical point. So this is the minimum value, and if you can uh, think about it again, to recap on the first derivative test, it goes from negative to positive, so this means that the derivative or the rate change is going down, and then it goes up, and this is where our x value is. That's our minimum. I'll just write minimum like that. So you have the function of time going down, and then going up like that. Let's write this uh, neater. So this is like that, something like that. And then this is our, yeah, this is just a general idea. This is if that was time or y, or x, and then this is x. So at this point is our minimum. And it would be a local minimum uh, if there was more critical points uh, and not necessarily an absolute. But in our case, it's an absolute because it's the only critical point at this point when the derivative is zero. So thus, that's a minimum. So now that we have set that up, that's for a general uh, velocity of the shortstop W. Now let's look at our two cases, going all the way back up here. Our two cases is right here. The shortstop can position himself uh, between the outfielder, etc. And he throws initial velocity 105 feet per second. And then, then, manager, then question asks, should the manager encourage a direct or relay throw? And again, notice, uh, note that the direct throw time was 3.285. And what if the shortstop can throw at 115 feet per second, or about 78 miles an hour? So let's look at that and write it down. So uh, what we have, so thus by the first root test, we have this. So um, if the shortstop will write if W equals to 105 feet per second, then basically what we have is x is equal to, well, 5 times 105 minus 360. So now we could uh, just plug it in a calculator or just do it by hand. We have uh, 105 times by 5. This equals to, well, 5, carry the 2. Uh, 5 times 0, 0, put a 2 down. 5 times 5, so 525. Now I have to subtract by 360. Let's do this all in one go. So 5, this becomes 12. And you can learn by, more about multiplication and subtraction uh, by hand in my earlier videos. So I put that in the video link as well. So 12 minus 6 is 6. And then what we have now, yeah, uh, and then we, can, we minus 1 like that. So we put the 12 there. 4 minus uh, 3 is 1. So this is 165 like that. I'll just put this in a bubble instead. So what we have is x is equal to 165 feet. So basically this is how much from the home plate, distance from the home plate. From the home plate, that's, that's to minimize the distance uh, if the velocity, if the uh, shortstop throws at 105 feet per second is 165 feet from the home plate, like that exclamation mark. So now we want to find out the time. So t is equal to, yeah, t is equal to, what we recall is 1 half minus 10 times it by, well, it's now it's a giant formula, ln of 720 plus x, where x is now 165, and then divided by 
the 1000 and then minus, I mean it was a plus actually, one of 10w, which is now the w is 105, minus, and now we have the x which is 165, all divided by 10 times 105. So that's uh, that formula above. So that's the one for the time, the t of x, let's just make sure we were correct. I'm writing as t of x one half, minus 10 ln 720 plus x, and now this is 10w minus x, and there's a 10w is 1000 as well. But our x is 165, or 720, and then the speed is 105. So if we plug this into the calculator, yeah, so here I've plugged that giant formula in the calculator, and uh, so there's 1 half 10 ln 720 plus 165. Uh, Etc. It's just a Google calculator. It pulls ln of 10 times 105 minus 165. Etc. And we get this one 3.431. Etc. And I'll keep it at the three digits 3.431. 3.431 seconds. Yeah. So this is 3.431. But if we compare it again with the above of a direct throw, direct throw from question 3A was. 3.285, and again, make sure to watch that video in um, the link below. So that was 3.285. Well, this is greater than 3.285 seconds. Yeah, so thus the manager, yeah, I'll write, so thus, I'll just write the manager, the manager should encourage a direct throw because this is less. Uh, this this time is longer than uh, just throwing it directly. If the shortstop can throw 105 uh, feet per second, so the manager uh, should uh, encourage a uh, direct throw instead of a relay. Encourage a direct throw instead. So that is our answer right there. So that's the first part if it's 105, but we were also asked for if it was 115. So let's scroll up again to see what, exactly what we were asked. Should the manager encourage a direct throw or relay throw? That's if it was 105. Now what if the shortstop can throw 115? Now oh, that uh, makes it interesting. So let's say the shortstop can throw faster than the 105. Scrolling all the way here. So if the shortstop speed w is equal to 105 like that 105 feet per second instead I mean 115 feet per second instead of the 105 uh, then now we have a different x uh, or the minim minimum minimum uh, distance to minimize time so now our x is equal to uh, let's just scroll up again now I think that was so our x is equal to yeah, 5w minus 360. So it goes to 5, 115 minus 360. And again, let's just calculate this by hand. It's a good exercise in it. So 115 times 5, this is going to be, well, 5 times 5 is 5. And it's 25, carry the 2. 5 times 5 is, uh, 5 times 1 is 5, carry the, uh, add 2 is 7. Now 5 there. 575 five, subtract by 360. This becomes 5. This is goes 7 minus 6 is 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. So this means put this in a bubble like that. So we have x is equal to 215 feet from the home plate. That's right from the home plate. So that's the, he should position himself even further out as opposed to that 165. So now our time it takes for the outfielder to throw the shortstop and then all the way to the uh, catcher is equal to well, 1 half minus 10 lawn. Scroll up again. This was yeah, 720 instead of 165, it's 215. And instead of 105, it's 115. So we have the 720 plus 215 over 1000 and put a bracket like that plus lawn of now this was 10 times 215 uh, minus x I mean um, this is the speed uh, 115 minus x which is 215 over 10 w which is 10 times 115 like that 
And now, uh, plug this into the calculator, we get, well, this is this, let's just uh, move this over to 1.5. And then this one is 1.5, just changing only things that are different, 2.15, just did it, and then this is 1. So what we get is, uh, yeah, 3.241. Uh, yeah, but I'll just round this up because it's a 179. So 3.242. 3.242 seconds. And now notice again, now this is the 3.285 was the uh, uh, direct throw. This is less than the 3.285. So uh, barely less than it. But regardless, yeah, when you're uh, playing in the pros, every fraction of a second matters. So thus... Uh, the manager, in, in this case, the manager should encourage a uh, relay throw. Should encourage, encourage a uh, relay throw. Especially when you're dealing with the pros, even though there's bigger margin of error th throwing it uh, for relay. But the, the thing is, when you're dealing with the pros, every second matters, so not going to literally cost you a run or not and you can have a lot of time to practice especially if you're getting paid millions of dollars to do so anyways that is all for today this is a very long video but it again this is uh, breaks down the uh, physics of um of uh baseball really in depth and in detail and shows you the just just amount of calculus and physics involved in basically something as simple as uh, throwing the ball directly from outfielder to catcher or instead throwing it to the uh, shortstop and then throwing it there. So relayed versus direct throw and this is the stuff that uh, it can save you fractions of seconds if you uh, practice it and, and you have shortstops that can throw faster than the uh, outfielders and this can cost you a lot of, uh, well in baseball the major leagues it costs you a lot of wins and a lot of money are riding all along that Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned. In the next video, I'm going to go over question 3, part uh, C, which is what throwing velocity of the shortstop does a relay throw take the same time as a direct throw? So at what uh, speed is it the same? And then from there, you could see if you have someone faster or slower, and then you can decide through the manager whether to do relay or direct throw. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned. Like always, you can download all these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.